Hi, this is Darian Meacham from UWE Philosophy, and I'm here again with Dr. Francesco Tava from the University of Milan. Hello, Francesco. Hello again, Darian. Francesco, one of your areas of expertise is Central European dissident Marxism uh, from the 1960s and 70s. Um, can you maybe explain to us a little bit who some of the figures are in that movement, but also how their type of Marxism, the type of Marxism that they developed in that period, uh, was distinct from the orthodox Marxism or the Marxist Marxism of the Communist Party in uh, Czechoslovakia, but also in Eastern Europe at the time. Yes, of course. Well, the idea of a Marxist humanism started in the 60s with the task to bring Marxism and Marxist philosophy back to its original field, which is Western continental philosophy. So uh, retrace all uh, the links, all the bonds between uh, uh, Marxism and uh, Hegel's and uh, idealist philosophy, as well uh, as with other currents of uh, contemporary philosophy, like uh, phenomenology, existentialism, and so on. And uh, there are many different uh, ways in which this Marxist humanism uh, developed. One of them, which is uh, very important to me, is the one that uh, took place uh, mostly in uh, Czechoslovakia, thanks to a philosopher like uh, Karel Kosik, who uh, started his uh, efforts in this direction during the, during the, the 60s. And, uh, well, uh, the basic point of this kind of Marxism was uh, uh, the consideration, the reappraisal of uh, man, of human being, as uh, the central character of Marxism itself. And uh, in this way, uh, it was a very, uh, there, there was a very strong uh, uh, contraposition against uh, the uh, official ideology, which uh, saw man just as a force, just an, ele an element of power useful to uh, achieve a determined target. Uh, according to Kozik, it was important, on the other way, to underline other aspects of a human being, like uh, his, its, uh, his uh, problematics, uh, his most uh, tragic and also grotesque elements, like uh, uh, his capacity to laugh, for example, his uh, mortality as a fundamental aspect of his life. So uh, the idea was to take back this uh, very uh, human man, this uh, very uh, natural and mortal human being with all his uh, defeats, with all his uh, defects, as actually the central character of politics. And. Can you say something maybe about how this strain or how this development of Marxist philosophy was received by uh, the authorities in Eastern Europe and in, particularly in Czechoslovakia at the time? Well, uh, there was no uh, contact actually because the authorities just uh, denied this kind of uh, development of Marxism. The same idea of using the term uh, the the word man within uh, classic uh, uh, Stalinist Marxism was quite impossible. Uh, the man was seen just as the worker, like a total uh, uh, positive and uh, totally evident figure. Just the idea of conceiving man as a more complex uh, thing would be uh, accused by these authorities of a sort of existentialism, one, which one was one of the most uh, most common accuses against this kind of uh, this kind of kind of thought. So, uh, in this sense, uh, uh, there was a harsh battle between these two fields, and the Kosik, as well as many other philosophers at that time, were just banned from universities, and they cannot uh, publish or teach or do public speeches until the 90s. But also, also after 1989, and this is also another important aspect. They weren't quite uh, uh, pessimist about the situation because many things that uh, they found uh, wrong or problematic uh, during um, communism they found just uh, developed in another and not better way also in capitalism. So their critique I think it's still valid today because actually it touches many aspects of uh, contemporary democracies as well. That's very interesting. And I mean, did these Eastern European dissident or Central European dissident Marxists have an impact on the development of Marxism in Western Europe 
or, for example, on development of existentialist Marxism in thinkers like Jean-Paul Sartre or Merleau-Ponty? There were many contacts between uh, Eastern uh, Europe and Western Europe in this sense. Thanks, first of all, to the efforts of Eastern European or Central Eastern European intellectuals, of course. For example, in the 60s, a very important conference took place in Germany uh, under the, uh, after the idea of Erich Fromm about this idea of uh, socialist humanism. And that was an occasion to confront, to build a confront between uh, the many different positions. And we could also remember the work by uh, the group uh, Praxis in the ex-Yugoslavia, uh, where actually these uh, philosophers tried for many years to create this, uh, uh, also this uh, uh, international version of their journal written in English in order to develop this idea of praxis, which is one of the other m m very important uh, elements of this Marxist humanism. So, yeah, these efforts were present and s are still waiting to be studied uh, deeply, actually. All right, that's fantastic. It seems like there's still a lot of work to do in this area. Apparently. Let's hope that uh, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Francesco. You're welcome.